Our gospel lesson this morning comes from Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 34 and 53 to 56. This is on page 32 in the New Testament half of the Pew Bible. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Genesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be, be to, to thee, thee Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm one of those people who likes to reminisce and think about the old times. Not only that, I like to be around people who like to reminisce. Whenever I spend time with my sisters or my cousins, I like to talk about the things we did when we were kids. And I also like to compare how things were when we were young compared to how they are today. I'm one of those who likes high school class reunions because as a group, we can go back to those days when all of us were a little crazy and maybe doing things that we should not have been doing. I always enjoyed listening to my parents and their friends or my grandparents and their friends as they remember the days when they were young and what things were like in those days compared to now. Reminiscing is not only fun, it's healthy. Recalling our past helps us get a better understanding of who we are and where we came from. Recalling our past also inspires us to go in the best possible direction in life because we have a foundation to stand on. We have a basis to work with. In church, we reminisce much more than we think we do. And the importance of reminiscing in church is much more important than we realize. Look at our Sunday morning church routine as an example. Christians have been gathering for worship, the word, the sacraments, and the prayers for 2,000 years now. Why? So we can commemorate and keep recalling the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, which happened on a Sunday. In our church services, we, we read lessons of scripture that recall ancient past events that shaped our faith in God's sacred covenant with his people. We say ancient prayers that our ancestors and the early fathers of our faith tradition said as well. Whenever we take Holy Communion, we say the very words of institution that Jesus said, and the ritual itself 
is part of Christ's own commandment that we do this in remembrance of him. In other words, we reminisce each and every Sunday and reminiscing is part of the fabric of our faith as Christians. On Sundays that we celebrate Holy Communion, we reminisce. Jesus told us in this celebration, take this in remembrance of me. And so we recall his body broken for us and his blood that was shed for us for the forgiveness of our sins. Think about how we celebrate the feast of the nativity of our Lord. Think about how we celebrate Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Easter Sunday. It's all about reminiscing and recalling these extremely important events that shape our faith and our lives. Here at St. Agnes, think about each and every January when we recall the life and tragic death of Agnes Martyr at Rome. Our actions help preserve her precious memory so that others can understand her enormous faith and devotion to Christ. In other words, we reminisce and doing that is a good thing. In our epistle lesson today, Paul commands the church in Ephesus to remember who they are now and who they were before. Before he even gets into the details, he gets them in the frame of mind to start looking back and again see who they are and where they came from. The Ephesians were Gentiles and Paul helped them remember a time when they were outside of God's covenant simply because they were not Jews. Because they were not circumcised, they were physically and symbolically unclean. Although it was possible for Gentiles to practice Jewish faith and tradition, the religious systems in place made sure that the outsiders remained outsiders. And Jesus changed that. In fulfilling God's plan for our salvation and redemption, Jesus opened God's covenant to both societies, the Jews who are God's people by birth and the Gentiles who are God's people by adoption. The church at Ephesus knew this, but they had to be reminded. They had to start reminiscing and looking back. Paul reminds them to look back to a time when they were aliens in a strange land and having no hope in the world. And not only were they outside of God's covenant at that time, but there was hostility or jealousy between the Jewish and the Gentile societies. The people of Ephesus needed to be reminded of these things. Why? So they could understand more clearly what Christ means to them today and in the future. Having Christ in their lives meant that their circumstances and their outlook on life was drastically different. Paul says that by the blood of Christ, those who are far off have been brought near. He is our source of peace and the barriers that separate us he alone has broken down. He has replaced the law and its ordinances and has made one blood for all humanity instead of two. In other words, we are no longer Jew or Gentile, nor are we slave or free, but we are one 
in Christ Jesus. His blood was shed on Calvary's cross, and that is the blood that gives us kinship to one another. Paul sums it up with these verses when he says, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the prophets and apostles with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. We need to reminisce. There was a time in our lives where we did not know Christ and did not have the word of God on our hearts. There was a time when we individually felt like a stranger in a foreign land with no hope for tomorrow. But the word of God changes our lives daily. We know that by the blood of Christ, we are redeemed and the errors of our past are forgiven. We have peace for our lives today, peace that the world does not provide, and we have hope for tomorrow. Our lives have a sacred purpose and we can embrace that now. Our lesson from the second book of Samuel this morning provides another window into the past to see how far the Lord has brought us. The prophet calls out to the days of the Israelites when they were a nomadic people who wandered through the wilderness after being released from Egyptian captivity. They had lived in tents and scarcely had enough to survive on, but then made their way into their very own promised land, a land of milk and honey, where they could establish homes, develop trades, build safe and secure walls around themselves with beautiful gates and establish order for their society. King David anointed king over all Israel in a covenant before the Lord led his men to establish Jerusalem as its capital. And then he received a gift of cedar trees and master carpenters from the king of Tyre so that he could move out of a tent and into a beautiful house. Thereafter, David's son, King Solomon, built the temple so that the Ark of the Covenant would no longer be stored in a tent, but rather in a glorious and beautiful dwelling place. And looking back, we see that the temple built by Solomon ultimately wasn't the eternal dwelling place for the Lord of hosts. Instead, God raised up an everlasting temple, something far, far greater than David could have ever imagined. Jesus came to us as an heir to the throne of David yet he had no place. Jesus came to us as the Son of God, yet he had no riches. Jesus came to us not to establish another kingdom with walls and gates and boundaries, but to bring the everlasting kingdom of God into our realm of life and for us eternally. Jesus also taught us that the Spirit of God is not contained with a temple that could one day be destroyed, but that we ourselves are the dwelling place of the Spirit of God. And though we face the reality of death, as Jesus did, death cannot destroy God's dwelling place as Jesus himself conquered death and so will we, his people. In Jesus, God gave us a kingdom that has no boundaries, a throne that has an eternal heir, 
and a temple of the Lord that can never be destroyed, not even by death. Therefore, in order for us to see all with clarity and understanding, as well as with amazement for all that God has done for us, we have to look back. We need to hear the whole story again. We need to see the bigger picture again. In doing so, we can better know where we came from and see how far the Lord has truly brought us. By God's mighty work and divine plan of salvation, we are no longer strangers in a foreign land but members of the household of God. Amen. Amen.